So should you put a WeldTech lift on your Class C? Uh, I'm gonna give a quick introduction here so anybody who just wants to know the, the basic skinny on this thing, whether it's worth doing or not. And then if you wanna know how to do it, you can watch the rest of the video. Um, but this thing sat low. This is after the lift. And I'll give you the straight up answer. Yes, well worth it. Um, drove it for about a thousand miles before the lift. Dead on center, wallowed. Uh, if you ever came, you know, down the freeway, like you're running along those concrete, you know, barriers at which they're doing construction, it's like delayed steering. If you turn, it felt like the whole thing was just kind of delayed and responding. All that's gone. Um, one, I have way better ground clearance. Don't ever worry about hitting anything. Drives way better. I mean, I almost forgot how bad it drove because now I'm driving it around like it's a pickup truck. So much better. Um, so just for the ground clearance, probably worth it. The improved handling, absolutely worth it. So um, was it hard? Yes, I did it completely by myself. The kit is pretty complete. It is doable. If you've ever lifted a Jeep or anything else, it is a doable lift. Um, absolutely, one or two extra buddies would make it probably much, much easier. Um, you absolutely have to have some very tall 12-ton jack stands and some really uh, heavy-duty bottle jacks to get this thing up because your, your floor jacks are just not going to do it. Uh, Three-ton floor jacks was enough to kind of do the front, but the rear is... I think it was almost 10,000 pounds. So trying to lift that thing with regular floor jacks, even though I had two, just didn't do it. Um, the kit's pretty complete, other than I would say if I were to do this again, there's a few things you definitely need to know. For one, have help. For two, have good quality jack stands and jacks, and multiple, because you need a, probably a couple bottle jacks and a couple floor jacks to kind of especially when you're doing the rear i wish it came with in theory extended brake lines but you technically don't need them um, so in hindsight um, i did have to make a six inch drop bracket for the rear brakes because otherwise the brake lines in the rear are absolutely not long enough to do it so i did do a drop bracket which i'll cover in the video um, so if you can't fabricate that's something you'll want to do before you have this thing all tore apart I did a six inch drop, worked out perfect. Uh, front, uh, also you don't really need different brake lines, but you do have to take and point the brake lines down uh, rather than back, and you'll see when you're, when you're trying to do it. But otherwise, this whole lift was very, very doable. Um, if you have some basic welding skills, not a big deal. Uh, it took me a total of probably if I were to say continuous work, and this is 100% by myself, maybe 18 to 24 hours worth of actual work. Um, I took a little longer only because I like to paint parts and pieces and, and all that. So was it worth it? Yes. If you want to see how to do it, uh, watch the rest of the video. So what did it end up lifting? It ended up lifting it about four and a half in the front from where it was stock. About eight inches in the rear currently from stock and that's without the rear springs really settling in very much. So, you know, what else you're measuring underneath, you're gonna get anywhere from four and a half to eight inches more clearance from all your leveling jacks and anything else that hangs down. And this particular one is 32 feet long, so, um, and that step might just be too much for, uh, shorter people so I may end up having to go with the two-step option but this is probably where it's going to sit when it's parked somewhere at a campground and I mean it's doable but overall not crazy high looks like it should have looked in the factory twenty twenty three Jayco 30z um, sitting in completely stock right now I'm going to be installing a six inch weld tech designs lift kit on this nice two-wheel drive Class C and I'm going to do some measurements here to see where it sits right now and then uh, see where it sits afterwards so 
we'll see how this uh, this whole thing goes. Nothing's better than tearing apart a brand new uh, Class C and throwing a bunch of suspension at it. Now, this is the stock suspension. This is actually the upgraded higher end Jayco suspension with Coney shocks. If you look, it's got a Hellwig, Hellwig helper spring already on it. It's got a huge uh, aftermarket anti-sway bar that Jayco puts on this particular model. This is the Greyhawk. Um, but take a look at that spring. The factory leaf spring has a negative arc to it right out of the box. So, Okay, first step. Get this thing up on some jack stands. Nice 12 ton. Should do the trick. Uh, basically, I just had to get it up high enough Six tons could maybe technically do it, but uh, getting it all stabilized so I can take off tires, get as much room in there as I can. And there we go. It's nicely on the frame. Okay, tires and wheels off. Jack stands on good. Okay, this coach has ABS, so separating the connector from the body, unplugging it, disconnecting it all the way out so that it pretty much will just hang with this assembly once I get that off. So, just so I don't yank in any of these things. And that looked like the easiest place to do it is pop these off. And then go and leave it attached to the uh, front uh, steering assembly. There you go. Couldn't really show it because I can't hold the camera and pound. But all it took was put a little pressure on the bottom. Wrapping it right here. Causing a good amount of shock wave going through it. And then it just popped loose without damaging the boot. So... Uh, if you can get a hammer on both sides of it, it works amazingly well. But in this case, you really couldn't get a hammer on both sides. So I just tried it with um, a few good wraps. And of course, the bigger the hammer, the bigger the shock wave, the quicker it releases. So then you leave the nut on there just so that it doesn't pop loose. Now this is going upward. When the ball joint's on the bottom side, it'll keep it from falling, falling to the ground and damaging the threads. Oh, there it is. Hydraulic lifts off. And there's the bracket. And you can see it pretty gnarly looking ugly weld on that side. And that's it. So I'm going to two options here. You've got Mr. Saws All from Gear Buddy, and or Mr. Cutoff Disc, or Mr. Plasma Cutter. So. I'm going to decide which one I'm going to do here. I'm not sure yet, but I'm going to cut these off with something in just a few minutes. There we go. Quickly cut it off the plasma cutter. Now I'm going to use a flap disc. And these are the best things ever. Basically made from metal. Put it on an angle grinder and it uh, quickly gets rid of all the uh, high build stuff. And that it used to be mounted 10 inches back is exactly where that mount is supposed to get mounted for the new radius arm. So had to go because it mounts sits back here. So now I got to clean all that up. When I put the piece back on, I'm going to have to modify it so it'll fit around that bracket and then weld it so it's basically in about the exact same place it was. Should be fine. Okay, today's the assembly. Got all the new parts, extended radius arms, new custom vent, factory Ford arms, Fox shocks, coil springs for the front, radius arm brackets. I already scratched. These actually were pretty nice and beautifully painted, but I had to grind off the paint. I'm going to weld those on the frame today. Uh, and some new leaf packs for the rear progressive 
same thickness as the ones on there, so the u bolts should work. So that'll be the next stitch, but uh, today is putting all the front back together. Alright, there's the side, prepped, clean the paint off around where it's going to be welded. Already measured back 10 inches from there. Um, so that is the, in the instructions they talk about the uh, front body mount. From here, back there 10 inches, I cleaned off all the paint off the surface so we won't contaminate the uh, weld. And that's where the brackets can be mounted and welded on after I... Uh, Flap disc and got all the uh, most of anyway the old uh, welded piece from the um, leveling jack. Measuring ten inches back from the body mount to right there on the frame. And drew the sharpie on the uh, bare metal to mark the front of the bracket when I get that thing up and ready to weld. There we go. Loose leaf threaded the nuts onto I'm not sure what those arms are called. Control arms? Anyway, now I'm going to bolt the uh, extended radi radius arms onto those. Continue the assembly process per instructions. Okay, I'm just using some dollies that lets me slide that thing around back and forth. Also put the other end of the radius arm on a jack so I can jack it up a little bit easier as I'm working by myself to line up the two bolt holes to get that through factory hardware, spring perch, and got the bolt through just hand tight right now. So I'm not tightening anything up until it's all kind of aligned. And I'm gonna work on, go do the other side. Okay, I deviated from the plan a little bit. I am welding the brackets on without them bolted to the radius arms. Mainly because I'm going to also have to uh, clean that up and weld the stabilizing jacks mount on the same piece thing. And I want to get it all painted. It's going to be a lot of heat and I don't want to uh, melt the bushings. I put in just a small piece of... Uh, board to protect the fuel line that happens to be running right across there so when I'm welding it uh, will keep the fuel line from getting sparks or uh, too much heat. So now I'm going to move on to the other side. A little cold pre after I clean it up but uh, should be strong. Okay it's time to modify these uh, leveling jack brackets. One is done. So you can put some painter's tape on there mark up the lines where you want to cut this one is ready to go uh, show you how it lines up in a minute but I'm doing the same thing to the other one duplicating that marked where I'm cutting this one's going to be cut straight off because it's going to be on the front side of the bracket and that's what it looks like when it's all done so best thing tool to use for this is angle grinder with a thin cutoff disc. Just go slowly back and forth, back and forth till you cut through all the straight lines. Uh, way better than a grinder, way better than a sawzall, a lot more accurate, but just no pressure, slow back and forth until it just eats it away. Um, works really good. will be it. Get these things cleaned up, get these welded on, um, and then I'll be able to put some paint to it and finish assembling some of this stuff. There we go, there's the new brackets, and since it'll be hard to paint once it's on there, um, gave it a nice coat of paint to the spots I'm not going to be able to get to taped off the area which I need no paint 
so that I can, you know, basically uh, weld that. Then I'll touch it up for it with the paint afterwards. And for anybody who fabricates a decent amount, use Rust-Oleum engine enamel. It dries to the touch within about a half hour to where you can actually touch it, move it, use it. And uh, it, so if you want to basically keep on moving on your project, once you paint and you want to put paint on it, engine enamel, Rust-Oleum, fantastic, dries pretty quick. You can get it in a semi-gloss, flat, whatever, any texture you want. Um, the other alternative, which I used to use quite a bit, is actually barbecue, Rust-Oleum barbecue paint. It comes in a satin or a flat, and that actually dries five, ten minutes, and you can handle that stuff. What I noticed though is not as oil resistant or as durable as the engine enamel. So if you got an extra half hour to wait for it to set up, engine enamel. But if you use standard paint, you're waiting two, three, four hours um, before it's not even tacky. So right now I just did this 10 minutes ago and it's already not tacky. It's a little soft, but uh, two coats 10, 15 minutes ago, half hour, um, I'll be able to weld these things on without having to worry about the finish. And there we go, that's the bracket. We'll be back onto the frame for mounting the jacks. Give it a quick coat of paint. I'll be ready to bolt these radius arms on. Okay, since I opted to not bolt it on before I welded it, I was worried that it would be very difficult to get this thing all lined up. But, um, looks to be like it's going to be pretty easy, actually. This thing moves around enough uh, where I can push it back and forth, up and down to get it in there. And then if I have a jack under the other piece and jack it up, I should be able to get it level enough to get it all bolted in. So, definitely um, not assembling it prior seems to be working out okay. I'll, I'll let you know as soon as I get this thing worked in. So, passenger side went great all everything great radius arm connected to the control arm and i found the driver's side it does not allow enough flex when you've got the um the bolt here connecting those two together you cannot get enough flex to get the bolt into your mount so you've got to pull that bolt out then it can swing over then you can push it in now i can put the bolt back while everything's loose and uh, put this thing together so otherwise looks like uh successful you can do it without putting all those bushings on beforehand and i'm glad i can because i really didn't want it to melt the bushings considering i was putting a lot of heat to it especially with that leveling bracket it's coming along nicely there's a nice tight shot sky jacker spring spring container clip perfect on there this thing's so nice compared to doing like a jeep lift where you can let the arm down far enough for that to easily go in that's all done and bolted on and that was very very easy actually um just uh lined up once you pulled that bolt out find that one up before you tighten it before you tighten that pop that bolt in that connects the uh radius arm to the control arm and then uh drop the bolt in and it's good to go so uh, add the shock and work on the passenger side so far the instructions are pretty much spot on so weld tech does a great job with the instructions so far uh, everything's gone as planned Okay, so putting front uh, calipers back on, got that bolted back in, put all the other stuff fine, it's got lift. Um, brake lines are questionably long enough, I mean they are, but this actually comes out at an angle this way, and it, if left there, it puts too much pressure on the brake line. So in theory, probably a four inch longer brake line would not be a bad idea, but if you rotate this, down pop the clip take this off carefully bend it down then uh 
should be good to go. And then I'm going, I just had to round the hole out so that'll fit back in and I can put the clip back on. So that's just something to note that that's going to be a bit of a, you'll need a rounded file and some care and be very careful with it. But um, that's going to need to be done. Uh, everything else is going together great. So brake lines are turned down. These are good. Adjusted the steering to get it back. At least rough enough for the uh, alignment. Put the drop down brackets on for the sway bar. That all worked out fine. Put Loctite on all the bolts. Um, connected back up that sensor. And there's the bracket. Bolt on the leveling jacks again. That worked out fine, not bolting them up prior, just to you know recap that that worked fine you definitely don't have to assemble it to weld it all together it was actually easier to hold it up and weld it without it being bolted to the uh, radius arm but came good the only thing left is the shocks and that i'll be throwing in in a little bit okay front is buttoned up ready for me to jack that front suspension up get the tire back on see where it sits so shocks in that went well. You definitely have to rotate the shock because it's really even hard to get a wrench in there to hold that up or not. Uh, lower shock mount works great. Everything's good. Everything's tight. Rechecked all the bolts. Sway bar drop is in. Everything's ready to go. Torque down everything. Um, so, should be good to reassemble the front tires. Tires are off. Hellwig helper springs that were factory put on this uh, Jayco Greyhawk. Apparently this was a suspension upgrade to make it the best handling RV on the market and uh, remove those Hellwig helper springs. And next order of business is going to be disconnecting sway bar, shocks, dropping the axle down and removing that big ass uh, leaf spring there. So, so far going all right. It's just showing that you can do this in a driveway. Okay, shocks are off. Sway bar end links have loosened that, unbolted it from the frame. Um, and side note, I don't think I've mentioned this, but whenever you're taking anything apart and you're working on a project like this, especially if it takes days for you to do it, Always thread the bolts and nuts back on to where you took them off, kind of like the shock mount. Put the bolt back on so you don't have to hunt for it later when you're ready to put the new shocks on. Um, in this case, working with a rear axle this heavy, I always support each side of the axle with a completely separate jack, which then lets me kind of articulate the axle up and down. And if you just do the center pumpkin, sometimes it can get out of control for you. Where you're jacking it up and one side is going to want to go up more than the other side depending if you still have the other spring attached so much easier if you just have two jacks that way you can completely control the the angle um, of the axle as you're pulling it apart so about ready to start taking this uh leaf back off that ought to be fun Okay, well, got the driver's side leaf spring in, and I'll tell you what, uh, it is not a one-man job, but I did get it done. Um, so, get at least one good, healthy, strong friend, because these uh, springs are, a, are really heavy. Two, um, you really got to jack this, uh, I'll take a measurement later, but this isn't even high enough. I actually had to raise it because the springs are so arced that I couldn't get the axle down far enough with my initial lift thinking I'd be high enough. So you cannot lift the chassis high enough. Um, the higher the better. Right now I've got it, it probably, I'm gonna, I'm gonna measure it. In fact, I'm gonna pause this just so I can measure it. Okay, measured. It's basically, currently I have it at 28 inches from the ground. 
I would recommend going 30 if you can get it up that high um, because you know I had it at I think 24 was not enough added four inches to it uh, 28 seems to be it'll be far enough where the axe can drop it out where the spring arc will still you know uh, be uh, won't touch the axle and you can just bring the axle up to the, to the spring once you get the spring in but man also on the driver's side on this truck since that's where the brake line comes down the brake line is absolutely not long enough while these springs are arced and no weight on them the uh, brake lines are too short including the main brake line that goes to the center pumpkin is got somewhat stretched if you've got to drop this axle down so I may be replacing that just because it did have some you know pressure put on it but at least to get this thing done and drivable took the brake caliper off so that I you know instead of disconnecting the brakes and having to bleed them center one seemed to be okay and I'm gonna work on the uh, passenger side now but boy wow not um this actually made the front look easy this was not fun a heavy jacking it up good jack stands getting things bolted and those springs are man they're heavy and I'm old so sort of halfway done also to give you a nice visual here the front spring that's a stock spring with less basically i think we have 1100 miles on this thing <coughs> so right out of the factory whether it became flat or came flat it's hard to know but uh even this has a slight negative bend at the end and this is with hellwood helper helper springs that is the new leaf pack a nice arc I'm guessing it'll flatten out quite a bit once you get all the weight on it but this particular one was actually inverted um, the new leaf uh, actually look very similar similar thickness and everything um, but look at the difference there huge but that's the factory springs basically flat um, kind of pitiful really Okay, sway bar relocation bracket is pretty easy. There's the bolts. On this, it's just got a captured nut. Let's get that out of there. There we go. Okay, it has a captured nut that fits in there. And actually, you can just reverse it, put it on the other side, down. Um, so I'm just going to measure the same distance from this hole to the square to the bottom, use the same clip, and that'll relocate the bracket down basically four inches. So that should work. I'm going to drill it and show you after it's done. And there it is. So clip, half inch hole, sway bar bracket. I'm going to get that on. I'm going to need two hands for that. But pretty easy well there's always something that rears its ugly head and what I found is the brake line for the driver's side is absolutely not long enough to uh, to basically uh, not either replace um, since I didn't have a brake line I need to get this done I created a six inch drop black bracket so that I took off there's a main I don't know kind of like a hub where the hard brake lines come in attach the soft brake lines coming down to the driver's side and down to the middle of the pumpkin both of those were pretty stretched and tight and even when i put the weight of the cab it doesn't compress enough to really give enough even room to remount that caliper i to take off to drop the axle out so um my only option is uh i had to create a drop bracket unscrewed that main plate there's plenty of extra room in the hard line and actually it drops down by itself when you take the bolt off about six inches and it just floats there so i'm making a hard line uh, uh basically a bracket to drop it down mount it and that actually might be the final solution so we'll see once i get it over there i'll get some shots of that okay and there's the drop bracket nice and solid uh, two quarter by 20 with lock washers holding on to the original mounting spot. 
two holes, one to keep the thing from sliding and a 5 16 grade 8 there. And that is on there. And all the lines were good. Plenty of room on each all the lines. So that probably should be included in the kit there, Jeremy. So think of, th you know, contemplate that. A nice six inch drop bracket, bracket for the distribution block here. Um, anyway, there you go. I'm about to put some tires on this thing. Lift is done with the exception of uh, drive shaft angles and alignment. So we tackle that today, but drove it around the block, came back. Um, sits really nice. Sits like it, you know, you'd look like this looks like it should look. So doesn't look crazy lifted. The rear should settle down another inch or so, probably after the first trip. Um, let me get some measurements. Well, I'm not a driveline expert, but these three pieces, this is this is uh, figuring out which drop bracket you're going to need to get this thing all back to square is quite a bit of fun. Um, you get Harbor Freight anywhere. You get a little angle finder. Oops. A little angle finder. And what you're wanting to match is this joint with the joint not on the drive shaft but on the output shaft that angle and this angle you want to get as close as possible so this one i'm setting at zero so i can go and check the other one and I am within one and a half degrees, which is good. You definitely want to stay within about two degrees, I think is the maximum out of angle you want it to be, because U joints counteract each other. So if, let's say this were at four degrees, you want to have this plane match that plane. And in a single piece drive shaft, it's not that difficult. But what I'm finding is you adjust anything up you're affecting every other angle all the way down the line so um kind of pretty close i'm within two degrees from this one to this one i'm within a degree or two of this one to the next one and the only one that is still a problem is the actual um differential so i'm going to actually have to use an angle shim to rotate the pinion down about four or five degrees so that all these stay pretty much within line of each other and then I just rotate the pumpkin down with some uh, angle shims. Otherwise I found that for this particular rig with this length a uh, two inch shim at the front, a four inch shim at the next bearing in and then just have to rotate the pumpkin down. So with a angle finder that's what you can pretty much tell because by eyeballing it you really can't tell um, so just trial and error going back and forth adjusting i've got this thing set on some some uh levelers so i can basically crank it up or you know a little bit at a time let it down let it up um so i can kind of hold it all in place so as i adjust one i got to come back and check the others to find out whether they're still in enough of alignment so Nice thing is it's worked out somewhat even, two inch, four inch, and then I just have to rotate the differential down. Well, there we go. I think I got it. I made a, uh, so that's quarter inch wall, two by two. So that's a two inch drop. That is basically a, about a one degree change between each one of these joints. That one, I made a bracket out of some uh, two by four inch stock I already had, two by four by 120. So I capped each end with a uh, eighth inch flat bar and welded it. So it's uh, much stronger, won't twist and won't crush. So first carrier bearing, two inch drop to a four inch drop. And it's just about perfectly straight all the way back. The